Hello everyone! In this tutorial today, I will be going over how to import, customize, and save basic PBR texture files in Adobe Substance. For this video, I've broken everything down into snippets of information, added links to further resources, and have timestamped the different contents so it's easy to jump back and forward through this tutorial if you'd like to. To begin with, I will go over how to import image files into Substance Painter to be used as texture maps for your PBR, how to set those files up to create the PBR material, and how to save that material within the program for you to use later. I will also briefly go over some basic customization for imported PBRs and how to import an SVSAR file if you have one in your material download folder. Before I jump into the tutorial, I want to briefly touch on what a PBR material is. PBR stands for Physically Based Rendering and is a method of shading and rendering that provides a more accurate representation of how light interacts with surfaces. It has huge benefits when texturing models, both for artists and production, but I don't have time to go over that today, so I'll include some resources in the description for you to learn more if you're interested. Let's have a quick look inside a material download folder. When opening your PBR material file, there should be multiple image files inside and will typically include your base color, an ambient occlusion map, a normal map, a height map, etc. as shown here. Some maps may have differing names depending on the company that made or distributed the material, the workflow being used, and the overall material look or type. Speaking of workflows, it's worth noting that there are two main types used in Adobe Substance Painter. These are the Metal Roughness Workflow and the Specular Glossiness Workflow. Each workflow has its own pros and cons and maps specific to it. For the purpose of this tutorial, I will show you how to plug in maps for all the map channels, so both workflows will be present in the one material. So it's up to you to consider which workflow works best for you and to use the appropriate maps and shader settings for it. I've gone ahead here and imported and baked a model for visualizing the texture on. I've included links to other channels for these steps. There is two ways to import files into Substance Painter. The first is to click and drag your files from the folder into the materials shelf of the program, which will cause a window to pop up with a list of files you're importing. Using the drop down menu in the box on the right of your file name, you can define your texture for use in the program. For creating PBR textures, you'll need to set your file type as a texture. You can also click and drag to highlight multiple files for defining in bulk. The next step is to decide which library you would like to import your file to. If you would like to save the material for future projects, it's best to import to your library assets library, as the other two options will import to either the project library and only be usable for that project, or to just the current session and will get deleted when the session is closed. The second method for importing files involves clicking on the file menu in the top left hand corner of the program and using the import resource button. This will open the pop-up menu from before where you can use the add resources button on the top right to open File Explorer to navigate and select the files you'd like to import. Next, you'll want to check you have the appropriate channels for the texture maps enabled. To do this, you'll need to open the Texture Set Settings menu, which is generally the second option from the top on the right hand side of the UI. Here, you can see what channels are active and can enable more through the plus icon. If the channel you need isn't available to be enabled, you'll want to check your shader settings and make sure the shader you're using supports the type of material you'd like to make. Depending on your chosen workflow, you'll want to use either a PBR roughness or PBR specular shader. To begin making the PBR texture, a new fill layer needs to be created. In this layer, you can activate and deactivate the different material map options by clicking the corresponding button in the property menu like so. Then, you want to find the image files you imported before in the textures shelf and click and drag the texture map to the corresponding channel. So your albedo, diffuse or base color map will go into the corresponding color channel, the roughness to the roughness 
metallic or metalness to the metallic channel, emissive to emissive, opacity to opacity, normal to normal, and so on, depending on what channels you have. You can also set your map to the channel by clicking the channel and typing the file name into the search bar. Some files may not have a directly corresponding name, but it's usually easy to Google the texture type and find out the best channel for it. Now I haven't done the height map yet, because things can get a little funny when including it in a PBR texture. If we follow the same steps as before, we can end up with an intense height input from the channel, which often isn't what the texture is intended to look like. If there's no issue with how the height map looks with the click and drag method, then you can skip this next step. To be able to adjust the intensity of the height map, or any other grayscale channel for that matter, we need to create a new fill layer. Then, we want to add a black mask to our new fill layer by right-clicking the layer and selecting the black mask option. Next, we want to add a fill layer to our mask by right-clicking the mask and selecting the add fill option at the bottom of the menu. In our new fill effect, we want to click and drag our height map into the grayscale channel. Then, we want to click back into the fill layer and turn off all the channels but the height. We can now use the slider to adjust the height map in the material. There is one downside to this method, which I will cover later on in the video, but it essentially adds an extra step to adjusting the size or orientation of the texture. Finally, we want to save our texture. First, we need to name our layers we created. I normally use the name of the company or website I downloaded the texture from, followed by the texture name. For the height layer, height is added to the end of the name. Next, you'll want to create a folder named the same way. Whatever you name this folder will become the name of the saved material, but you can change this later if needed. Click and drag the layers into the folder and right click on the folder to bring up the menu. Select the Create Smart Material option, which will prompt your shelf to swap to the Smart Materials library and have your new material selected. You can now click and drag this smart material onto a new model to apply the PBR material. If you need to, you can right click the material to rename it or delete it. If you'd like to customize your new smart material, there's a few ways to do it. For reference, I've switched materials here for a better visual guide for this step. First, if your material is tiling, you can adjust the size of it or reposition it on the model by adjusting the UV transformations in the properties menu. You can also adjust how your material is projected onto your model through the projection dropdown. Normally I use UV projection, which projects onto your UV maps, or triplanar, which projects the material directly onto your model. Using the tiling slider, you can adjust the size of the tile, whilst the rotation slider changes the orientation of the pattern. If your height map is in a separate layer, these changes aren't automatically applied, so you'll need to copy your new tiling values to the fill effect on the black mask of the height layer to replicate the tile changes. You can use blend modes to adjust the color of your smart material. To do this, you'll need to create a new fill layer inside your materials folder and set it to the color you'd like your material to be through the color channel and turn off any other channels not being used. You can also use channels like the emissive to adjust the glow of a material. Then, using the drop down menu on the right side of the fill layer, you can use different blend modes to more seamlessly apply your color changes to the material. There is plenty of different modes available here with different functions, so I recommend experimenting with them to find what you like best. You can also use non-smart materials supplied with the Substance Painter program from the material shelf to adjust the appearance of your material. It's essentially the same steps and uses blend modes in the same manner, but instead of selecting the color through the channel, you'll want to click and drag the material onto your model. You can then add your color layer to the smart material folder, adjust your file name to reflect your new material, and save it as a smart material for later.
Finally, you can add pre-made smart masks supplied in the substance painter materials, such as dirt or moss, to customize your material. For this, you'll want to make a new fill layer, then using the masks shelf, click and drag the mask you'd like to use onto your layer. You can adjust the color of your layer as you would normally and use blend modes to further customize the texture. Once again, you can adjust the file name and save it as a smart material for later. If your texture file download includes an SBSAR file, you can use this instead of importing individual maps. This is because an SBSAR is a compiled version of all those PBR maps in one convenient file format. It follows almost all the same steps as before. Import the file into Substance Painter and define it as a texture. Instead of dragging individual maps to the channel, click and drag the singular SBSAR file to the channel. This will prompt a change in the UI and give you the option under the channel to set the output channel to match the material channel. Repeat this for other channels and voila, your SBSAR file is now a PBR material which can be customized and saved as a smart material for future models. And that's it for the tutorial today. If you'd like to learn more about the theory behind PBR materials, their properties, workflows, or how they work in Adobe Substance Painter, I'd highly recommend the documentation I linked below and recommended earlier in the video. I've also supplied some links for websites with free and purchasable PBR materials, including where I've sourced the materials used in this tutorial. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope I've helped you learn just a little bit more 